Good, good, good. What we do uh, every morning at Carmel Community School is a meet and greet. I'd say it's uh, the most important part of the day because you're checking in with all pupils to see how they've come off the back of the weekend or the day before. Um, so it's just a good morning uh, welfare check and, and you know just look at them in the eyes and just ensure that they're okay. We're here at Carmel Community School and it's the day of the showcase. We're doing a little scene in drama and we're doing some music about conflict and peace for music and we're showcasing all our art. Now we are going to show you guys the Year 9 dance. This is about diversity and there's a story about this woman called Lindsay. I met a whole bunch of people who'd been threatened with deportation and threatened with detention. So there was a group of 15 of us and we decided what we're going to do is we're going to stop a deportation flight. And you will see this because we've been exploring different styles of dance, we have been using different movements, different lifts, as you may see the plane that we're going to do and I just hope you guys really enjoy it because we really enjoyed making it. Our study school theme uh, this year has been diversity and we've been exploring um, the story of somebody called Lindsay and uh, her and some of her friends laid in front of a plane uh, that was deporting people. It, we're telling it by using uh, diversity and uh, isolating people and using different uh, movements from different dance styles. That person who was lifted was representing the plane taking off. In my group, we were the uh, oppressors. We were using like sharp movements and like sort of foot stomps to sort of show that we had the power. I think something that is very unique to Car Manor is the confidence that the children have. Um, normally that's a skill that you sort of acquire later in life, but I think because they're empowered and they know that the adults around them really care about not only their academics but how they develop as a person, you can see that in how confident they are to answer um, when they meet others who are new to Car Manor, they're very welcoming and very honest and open. So I think that's definitely something that is unique about working here. Uh, I'm helping the teachers to carry equipment downstairs. I'm excited for it. Hey Mia, how are you feeling about this? Um, I'm feeling a bit nervous about the showcase because it's the first time that we have to do it. So. Yeah, I'm a bit nervous but I'm mostly just excited to show what we've been working on. So as part of study school, what we're able to do is allow the pupils to shape their performances and their learning. So they've been given a stimulus and now they're taking those ideas and developing them in small groups for them to have creativity and the option to create their own pieces with their own ideas. Poor family could be dead for all I care. You have to get out my country. But I can't tomorrow. lose them too. You have to leave, you don't have a choice, follow The pupils me. have been generating ideas about peace education and diversity and conflict resolution. They've been looking at different stories um, from real life stories and today they've been creating scenes to help tell those stories and think about why diversity and peace education is so important. Stephanie Handley, what do you think you're doing? Eating lunch, sir. Get to your table, now! Why can't I sit with my friends? Are you friends with this girl? At school, we just stay away from each other. Tell him, I said I'm sorry, please. Safi, I know you are, but that <coughs> word.
The intention is that we have every child in a position where they're listened to and they're able to speak on a regular basis, be it in their coaching programme or be it in the way that we deliver our teaching and learning or the way we deliver our flexible learning, which is uh, extracurricular activities. Chicken. to create the right conditions where children could, with adults and adults with adults, build positive relationships. And that's where we started um, all those years ago and that's where we started to develop our circle work and our coaching programmes um, and our, uh, our intention uh, that we felt that if we built positive, strong relationships within the school community that that would spread into the local community and that would give us social capital and give us some traction in terms of being able to challenge for improvement. Um, we would probably ask questions and try and make sure that we didn't like force any views onto you. We'd just try and make you help you figure out yourself. My experience was very good. Um, uh, you can really see how the person developed throughout the whole se session and how their emotions changed from the beginning and when they left. And the good thing about like our peer reps is that it's a, yeah like what I may have said, student to student, so they can empathise a bit more. But also, um, like if you have an RP rep in the class, then they might be able to see what actually happened because teachers don't always see everything. Mm, thank you. Anyone else want to sort of come in on that? It's also helpful because it means the teacher can keep on teaching the class while the student goes out and talks to them and maybe it's better for them if the student's talking to them because they can sort of understand but if a teacher's saying, oh don't do this, they might not listen as much. A restorative coach is a trained like peacemaker who um, will talk to younger years to help them resolve their conflicts. And I think the wider impact of the school is less violence and less conflict because people get to reflect on themselves and how to re repair the situation in a sense. They're currently putting their artist boards together, so they're putting all their finished works together and the boards are looking fantastic and this will be exhibited during the showcase in a couple of weeks. In this course we've used acrylic paints, oil paints, oil pastels, watercolours and just like regular colouring pencils. So we've used a lot of different techniques with those materials. With the black acrylic paint, we created dots across our artwork to create texture and make it more interesting. And that's also a traditional African art form. And we also used oil pastels and again acrylic paint and create a design on the paper. We've been looking at quite a few different artists um, who like bring in their culture into their art. So it's based around that quite a lot. So we are going to practice that together, okay? We will be doing um, a session on developing oracy skills because obviously speaking in front of an audience is, is something that they might not have done before. So during the showcase, we're going to have their work exhibited on boards and then we'll be discussing the work in front of an audience. Um, so this is my work here and I've done a range of things. You have to include some writing on it about what you've done. Like we've got an oil pastel scratch. So we'll go through that during the lessons. It'll be a reflective lesson. So you know, what, what, what materials have you used? What artists have you used? As long as you've made progress, that's all that we want, really. We found ourselves in this, in this um, opportunity to develop peace education, which we are now developing peace language, and it's about focusing on positive peace and how children, uh, despite some of the structural, cultural barriers that they face that do them harm, that they can, if we work in a particular way, they can find themselves um, uh, through using peace language and restorative language and relational language, they can find themselves fully equipped for their futures. Rafa and Galia are each going to speak. They're, they're sort of neighbours in the world. They're in two towns, but it's a part of the world, Palestine and Israel that has seen conflict. What we're talking about is independence, that the Palestinians in the occupied territories have a right to their own state. I'm Palestinian 
from a Muslim family, a liberal Muslim. I don't wear a veil, as you see. I represented my family who were under an Israeli attack that period. There was like using F-16 uh, airport and uh, tanks were in the streets and I wasn't sure if I would be able to come back and uh, find my family alive or not. But even though, because I believe in what I believe, that I should tell the world about how do we look like as Palestinians. And we have uh, this hope of peace, this hope of um, living together as neighbors, sharing the land because it's the only solution. We're doing about diversity in music and we're using like different scales, like what very different emotions. So we were using like major scales, like do you happy? And like the other group are doing minor because we're doing like conflicts, so. Let's go for a minor chord. The major is like the peace and the minor is like the conflict because it's more sad. And we're sort of like putting the stories into like a music piece to like put it out to people. Do that twice. Hopefully that like they'll come away from almost like they've learnt something or like they feel something after hearing it. I think they're going to be a little bit nervous, um, as always, because they're going to have to perform. But I think they're really proud of themselves and they're really ready to show off what they've done. Um, they've been, they've known from the beginning of term that they'd be doing this. So I think having something to work towards makes them try even harder. incredibly impressive to watch everybody do that I do so much better than rehearsals it was absolutely fantastic to see I think study school has helped me to figure out what I wanted to become other than listening to my friends listening to things that they like and I think I should become more of a, like, a leader than a follower now if you trust the pupils, they learn from that and when they're aware that you trust them, they feel empowered and then you can see that work reflected in how they interact with peers and how they interact with staff as well. The rap show symbolises the diversity and the peace that we're trying to keep. My part lives here. When you talk to the children is that they feel that they're accepted and they're in, a, in a, an environment where they can learn and they have positive relationships with children in their peer group but also in other age groups. Um, and that, takes, that, that makes their learning experience a more enjoyable experience, um, uh, an experience that they are more comfortable with. And of course we know when children are happy and comfortable they learn more quickly, um, and they attend school more, they learn how to self-regulate their own behaviours, they learn how to support each other in each other's behaviours. Um, and this, this is really where the restorative practice element comes in. Since we've started to train students to work restoratively, I've noticed that in lesson, if there ever is an issue, I can entrust one of the students to go outside, and you'll notice that because they're empowered with the language, they can help each other really work through their issues and be reflective on what's happened and be able to be integrated back into the classroom. Even if you don't do RP training, it does help. I was doing some RP training in year eight, I think. It does like help a lot with all round being like peaceful and even if you're not in school and being watched by like teachers and your friends it's still kind of you can still stay in that mindset when mm -hmm. you're out with your friends or whatever.
and we, we talk, we're talking a lot about peace building. So there's peacekeeping, making building. And in terms of positive peace, we want to build positive peace. So what are the strategies that we put in place, not just to keep peace, not just to make peace. So we, we, we see the restorative practice as a key part of our making peace. But what does the peace building look like? And how do we build a capacity amongst the young people as in, whilst they're with us and into their future lives so they become peace, positive peace builders? Uh, Carmanagh Community School is a school that's committed to a, a relational approach to a child's education and um, a commitment to building resource and capacity to develop their character and their skills for life. Well, our school's already diverse, like it is really diverse. We have a lot of cultures in our school, but like to show it through like a piece of dance or work of art is just amazing because like you move your body and you show how it how it's portrayed and how it feels like or through an art piece, or through drama or music. Like, um, in dance now we're doing like, putting people in the sky, pushing it by aeroplanes. And I think that's like amazing, just to show that. It was like us. She was attacked because she stood up for what she believed in. It was quite nerve-wracking at the start, but then when it started going on, I think it went perfectly, and yeah. Yeah, it was good. Once I got going with it, I got more confident, and I feel like if I did it again, I could think of the things that I could improve on, and I could do it even better next time. I think we were successfully able to get across the sort of message of diversity and conflict in the play.